I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Justin Rice, the head of ecosystem at the Stellar Development Foundation. Justin, welcome to the show and thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Ashton. Great. Well, I'd love to start off the interview by getting a little bit of background on what you and your team are working on at the Stellar Development Foundation and how that ties into the Stellar XLM blockchain. Uh, sure. Uh, Stellar is an open source, open participation blockchain network. Anyone can spin up a node and anyone can build a product that accesses the network and anyone can issue an asset on the network. So it's really set up to make payments easy, specifically cross-border, cross-currency payments. Um, the Stellar Development Foundation, which is the organi organization that I work for, is a nonprofit that attempts to support the growth and development of the network itself. Our goal in doing that is to create equitable access to the world's financial infrastructure. But a lot of what we do is basically try to make it so that an ecosystem of developers and businesses and products can build on the network and use it as a back-end settlement for cross-border cross -border and cross-currency payments. So as a foundation, a lot of what we do is we steward the code. Um, so there is Stellar Core, which is the code that allows the computers on the network to interact and share a ledger and ratify changes to it, as well as Horizon, which is an API that allows developers to easily access it. We uh, work on those and try to make them functional and make sure that they improve and they continue to scale. Um, so a lot of a lot of what we do is is development time and energy and focus on mm -hmm. those two things, it's like sort of the the network level and the platform level on top of it. Um, and then we also work with the ecosystem to educate them to show people how to use Stellar the network uh, to empower them uh, both by like sort of uh, show, connecting them to each other and showing them the possibilities of the technology, mm -hmm. and by providing support in the form of uh, integration help and uh, Lumen grants. Mm -hmm. And we also serve as like a speaking partner to the world at large, and to regulators and lawmakers. Very cool, Justin. And the Stellar project has been around for quite a while and I've, I've been following it, but it's not uh, as popular from the people that aren't really in cryptocurrency. You know, they've heard of Ethereum, some of them have heard of Ripple and Stellar's right up there. Um, and I'd love to hear, you know, your take on why you like the Stellar project so much and what makes it unique in this space. Good question. I think that Stellar has some really unique features that set it apart from other blockchains and that allow it to serve very specific purposes. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, Stellar is really good for cross-border and cross-currency payments. And part of the reason that's true is that it has, as a fundamental feature, the ability to e easily issue any kind of asset. Mm -hmm. So Stellar is a sort of uh, supports all different assets. Any issuer can come and in a few, line of, a few lines of code, issue an asset on a Stellar network. Uh, that can be transferred and traded and bought and sold mm -hmm. on, on the network itself. And it's also very easy to connect those digital assets to external existing financial rails mm -hmm. so that they you can very easily create a representation of a real currency mm -hmm. that can be redeemed outside of the network for the underlying uh, fiat currency that it represents. So the sort of features of Stellar as this uh, uh, network that supports all different currencies and makes it very easy to transmute and transfer and hold them it is pretty unique. And it makes it a really great choice for any kind of payments solution. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And I know that you were actually working on a project within the Stellar ecosystem, Stellar X, which is a, an exchange. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what was that experience like uh, integrating with Stellar and you know, is the project running right now? Uh, yes, Stellar X is an exchange interface that is built as like a, sort of an access point to the Stellar decentralized exchange. So one cool thing about Stellar is that in addition to allowing people to issue any asset and to hold a balance of any asset, to transfer any asset, the ledger also stores on, on the account level um, any offers to uh, buy or sell the asset. So it has built into it uh, order books, right? So you can offer to exchange any given asset on Stellar for another asset. And all of those orders are sort of like held um, on the ledger until they're closed, right? So mm -hmm. they are just like a sort of centralized, I mean, it's, it is a, but it's decentralized. So the, the, at the ledger level, these offers allow uh, this, the creation of a shared pool decentralized exchange for all assets. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, Stellar is a backend technology. It's really something that developers interact with via API. And the first project that I worked on at Stellar is what you mentioned, Stellar X, 
And it, it is essentially a browser, right, that connects via API to the Stellar network mm -hmm. and gives users a front-end experience to interact with the Stellar decentralized exchange. So you can use it to, to like hold assets and to trade assets. And it shows you like the order books and, and trade histories. It's a lot like using any other kind of trading interface, say E-Trade or, or Thinkorswim or something like that. And it's very geared towards traders who want to take advantage of the Stellar decentralized exchange. And it was super fun to build on it because Stellar is really easy um, for developers to integrate a product. Like it has you don't have to worry about building all of the back end. So if you're mm -hmm. like a front end developer or a product builder, you can really like envision almost anything that the ledger can do. And it's really easy to create the, to, to use the existing tooling and like hook it up to a cool interface that has a good user experience. Mm -hmm. So like, it's just like a really um, seamless experience for a developer. And so that was definitely how I started working on Stellar was de designing, helping to work on a, a product and it's just a really good environment for a product to build. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. And I'm curious on your take on the future of trading with decentralized exchanges versus centralized exchanges. It's been a hot topic transitioning to decentralized exchanges, which are supposed to be better, but there's a lot of ways in which they're lackluster as well. You know, do you see that as a transition that's happening right now? I think that decentralized exchanges are challenging to, to, to kickstart, right? Like you need to get the flywheel going and that's mm -hmm. not an easy thing to do. And the reason why that's true is because for an exchange to work, there has to be good liquidity, right? You have to be able mm -hmm. to exchange one asset for another very easily. And you want to be able to have a lot of pairs with good liquidity in order to have it be a place where traders want to come and actually invest the time and energy uh, um, trying, to, uh, trying to exchange the assets. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, as decentralized exchanges get more and more users and, and sort of the network effect comes into play, you will have this moment when there's enough liquidity to sort of make them a more attractive option than a lot of centralized exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because they're not owned. There's not a single point of failure for them. Um, the people who are trading on them, they actually own the assets that they're trading rather than trusting in some third party to custody those assets. And they're, they're, it's also possible for decentralized exchanges to have different interfaces that comply with local regulations. Mm. Um, so I think that they can reach further into the world, which is part of how a, a network like Stellar access, like gives more people access to the world's financial mm -hmm. infrastructure. Definitely. It seems like there's that you might need a little bit of extra technical expertise or take an extra step yourself, not having that you know, full support of the centralized exchange, but it also allows you to maybe uh, take advantage of opportunities that you wouldn't be able to uh, that are you know in more early stage uh, and i think part of that mainstream adoption is having an ecosystem that allows you to, cr to create applications that can be accessed very easily by people that are non-technical and you touched on it just a little bit earlier here about having uh, the necessary building blocks for developers to make it easy to develop on stellar uh, but could you just again reiterate you know is it like system development kits and libraries? Um, what kind of tools do you have available for developers to be developing on the ecosystem right now? Yeah, at, at the sort of fundamental layer, Stellar is a program called Stellar Core, which again is what makes the network. It's how the nodes communicate with, with, with each other and keep track of and ratify the ledger. Most developers never have to touch that because on top of that layer, there's a really easy to use, well-documented API that gives you access to not only um, transact on the ledger, but also query the ledger for all the data, network data. But in addition to that, even on top of that, there are Stellar SDKs in I think 11 languages. So whether you're developing in JavaScript, Java, Go, Python, Ruby, you can um, download you know, and use this kit that is like sort of in the language of your choice. And mm -hmm. all of those are also really, really well documented. So mm. the tools available for developers to interact with the network are really, uh, are really diverse and really uh, robust and really well documented. But in addition to like the network level of, uh, of like sort of uh, supplies and products and tools that people can use, there's also tooling that exists uh, that to connect the network to existing financial rails. Mm -hmm. And so there's this whole world of, of specs, they're called stellar ecosystem proposals that explain to developers how to build the APIs and tooling that connect to uh, existing uh, banking infrastructure mm -hmm. in order to allow facilitate like on and off network on and off ramps. Mm -hmm. And not only are there specs that explain how to do it, but there's also a uh, reference implementation 
called Polaris that we have that you can download and like sort of use to spin up the servers or the clients that you need to facilitate those connections. So there's just like a ton of tooling to kickstart development and everything is really set up to be self-serve. Mm-hmm. You don't have to talk to anyone at the Stellar Development Foundation to get building on Stellar. You can really go find our documentation and start today because it will walk you through the process from from the beginning to the end. Mm-hmm. That's great to hear, especially about all the different programming languages. And that really opens up the doors for many more developers. And I'm curious because there are a lot of developers working on other mainstream blockchains as well. Do you have any incentivizations or encouragement for developers besides you know, having the libraries easy to use um, to make sure that they're developing on Stellar rather than on something like Ethereum or a similar blockchain? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I would say that a lot of blockchain developers, I think it really behooves them to learn to develop on multiple blockchains. I think mm-hmm. the, the future of a great blockchain developer will be someone who isn't limited to just working in like sort of one ledger, one backend, mm-hmm. they'll understand them all. And I think that's where we're going to start to get great interoperation between chains is when people have a, a broader understanding. Mm-hmm. However, we do have an incentive to get people to build on Stellar. It's a very direct one. So um, the SDF, the Stellar Development Foundation, we have a, a, we have a sort of a, a supply of, of lumens, which, are, which is the network currency, mm-hmm. but it, we're, it, it's not ours to keep, right? We, mm-hmm. we have promised this in, in a mandate, in a very public facing mandate. Um, we have plans to distribute it to very specific reason, like to very specific groups of people mm-hmm. in order to foster and encourage development of the network. Mm-hmm. And one of those buckets in, in the mandate is the ecosystem support bucket. And a specific part of that is something called the Stellar Community Fund. So we have basically, it's almost like an ongoing hackathon. Mm-hmm. Um, four times a year, we, uh, people can enter into a contest that uh, where they, where they sort of make a proposal for something built on Stellar or something that just furthers adoption of Stellar. So it could be content related to, but a lot of it is for developers. Um, and they can get, they can win uh, a Lumen award for their project. And those Lumen awards, ultimately how they're uh, divvied up is decided by the community, by a community vote. Hmm. But it's actually, um, you know, we give away 3 million Lumens uh, for quarter. So it's, it's ongoing and it's a fairly uh, significant um, pool and it's really there to incentivize people to get building on Stellar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. And hackathons are a great way to you know further the, get the community together and also further the progress. So that is great to hear. And one thing you touched on there was having developers that can work on different ecosystems. Uh, and also because you know there's sort of this movement of the blockchain communities need to work together. And there's that notion of interoperability of having different technologies that can work with each other. And I'm curious, uh, from your perspective at the Development Foundation, you know, how much interoperability uh, is included in Stellar's you know, direction towards helping grow the ecosystem? Uh, is it really, if there is a uh, possibility to have interoperability with other blockchains, is that something that Stellar has in mind? That's a good question. I, I mean, I think uh, fundamentally Stellar is set up to play nice with other blockchains. Um, as I mentioned, you can issue any asset on Stellar, and that includes assets that represent um, sort of value on other blockchains. So you can actually issue a Bitcoin token on Stellar that represents Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network or huh. an Ether token on Stellar that represents Ether on the, on Ethereum. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like in the design in and of itself, insofar as it's an asset neutral ledger, mm-hmm. it really is set up with interoperability in mind. And that interoperability extends not just to fiat currencies and the existing financial institutions and, and financial rails, but also to more modern, uh, you know, distributed ledger technologies and crypto mm-hmm. rails. I think that the idea of continuing to explore those connections mm-hmm. is, is definitely really interesting to me. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope that I'm not the only one who thinks that, but that in general out there in, in, the, in the broader blockchain ecosystem, people are thinking about how we can work together uh, versus against one another or, or, mm-hmm. or, you know, it's, it's the sort of team of rivals idea. Yeah. Right? Like we all, we all want to succeed, but we, I think we can all succeed by working together rather mm-hmm. than picturing ourselves as being at odds. 
Yeah. Yeah. We're running out of time, Justin, but I'm curious on what comes next for uh, your team at the Development Foundation. Do you have any uh, major milestones that you're looking to hit throughout the rest of 2020? Yeah, we, the next thing that will happen at the protocol level on uh, for Stellar is that we're going to release protocol version 14. And it has a couple of features that really are going to make it a lot easier to build user-friendly apps on Stellar. So I think over the next quarter, a lot of the sort of things, products, and, and changes and features that you'll see we're rolling out or that, that are getting rolled out on Stellar are there to make it so that people can build an app that looks and feels like a payment app, not like a crypto payment app. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And if there are developers or just viewers that are interested in getting involved with the Stellar community, what's the best way for them to learn more? Uh, they should just go to stellar.org slash developers. And once they're there, like they can sort of get rooted to the docs or they can find a list of the different um, community, uh, different uh, channels that our community interacts with. I think the biggest one is Keybase. Um, so you know, you can find links to the Stellar public key base there, but you can also find a list of all the other channels. So stellar.org slash developers. Great. Thanks so much for the time, Justin. All the best with Stellar ecosystem moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thanks, Ashton.